I'm going to show you assorted things. The first thing is unless product otherwise, and here I'm talking about end user productivity. That's what I specialize in. Unless product otherwise, everything we do is inefficient because end users have learned all the products by trial and error. There is no process defined. Everything is unstructured. So how do you know what you are doing is efficient or not? This is efficiency audit. If something is repetitive and does not add to top line or bottom line, most probably there is a better way. If you get a feeling that you are helping the software instead of the software helping you, that means your method is bad. And if you are using hands a lot, brain is idle, that means you are inefficient. As we go along, you will see some examples. Now, once you find something is inefficient, how do you learn? How do you find the best way? Typical approach is I don't know something. I will ask someone because that's fastest or I'll Google or chat GPT or if that also doesn't work, I go to help find. Unfortunately, all these methods do not work. Why they don't work? Because ask someone, don't waste time because the other person is equally inefficient. You will get another variation of inefficiency. If you go to Google, what comes on top of Google or any search engine, what comes on top is sponsored. Non-sponsored what comes on top is not because the answer is best, because the SEO is best. ChatGPT or Gen AI is slightly better, but still there is a better way. Help file is useless because if you don't know the name of the feature, what will you type there? Help me. It's not going to work. So the best way to learn something is to understand if you have a need in the context of a product, the solution has to be in the product. If it's a small little problem, usually you will find the answer in the right click menu. If it's a slightly bigger problem, you will find the answer in the relevant menu on the top. Initially little trial and error, but it works. And if you are trying to change the behavior of the software, for example, you start an Excel file, new file, three sheets. I don't want three sheets. I want one sheet. I'm creating a pivot table. I want it in classic mode. I don't want to change it every time manually. I want to change the behavior of the software. That is done in file options or edit preferences. This is how you learn any software. Teach this to your users. Now, I'm sure many of you are already trying all kinds of Gen AI. So here is a replacement to any kind of search. I have found perplexity to be very, very useful. For example, it asked, I asked it how to enable self-service password reset. Don't bother about the spelling mistake. I've seen a lot of people editing their prompts to correct spelling mistake. Don't waste time. This Gen AI, it has ingested all the languages and all the words in all the language. It can manage spelling mistake. So look at the search results. It has given me references, YouTube videos, detailed steps, and most importantly, related additional topics. So in my context, I always use this as a replacement to any kind of web search in recent times. Going forward, there is another one. Probably some of you have used it. Whenever you want to create an infographic, napkin.ai is becoming very popular nowadays. If you have not tried it, please try it as soon as you go back. So for example, here in napkin.ai, I put security and under that identity endpoint cloud network apps. And this is the diagram it created. This is not just the diagram it created. It is giving me multiple options and there are lots of options. And for each option, there are different styles. So I can go there and choose what I want. And once the diagram is ready, I can download, edit, whatever I want. Currently, this is free. And I don't know how long it will remain free, but it's a good tool to look at. Moving on, Mermaid. How many of you have used Mermaid code? Few. Very nice. So Mermaid is a JavaScript kind of thing, a text-based representation of a flowchart. So if you want to create a flowchart, use Mermaid code. And all Gen AI tools allow you to create Mermaid code. So look at this prompt. What am I saying? Create a step-by-step -step process of recovering from Win 11 uh, blue screen of death in mermaid format. Never mind the spelling mistake. This is the mermaid format. It gives you a flowchart as a text representation. It's not going to create the flowchart for you. So what do you have to do? Copy it and paste it in some place which understands mermaid syntax. If you just want a generic tool, mermaid.live, which is open source free, paste it there and you got your flowchart dynamically created. If you understand the syntax, you can tweak it here. If you want it in Microsoft context, we have loop. How many of you use loop in Teams? 
email, Microsoft. Okay. So loop is an integral part. Go to a loop page. When you go to a loop page, loop page could be Teams Outlook anywhere. Forward slash will give you multiple components. One of them is Mermaid. So now open the Mermaid component and in that, whatever is written there, you delete and you paste that code and you will get the flowchart. So let me copy paste that in front of you. Let me go to the original code, copy code, go to Mermaid and paste it. And the same flowchart you will get inside Teams or even email for that matter. This is available natively across Microsoft platform. There is no extra payment for it. It's a part of Teams, Outlook, OneNote, Word, everywhere. All right, moving on, image analysis and image generation. These are two very commonly used capabilities. Let me show you some examples of how you can use it for business context. For example, here we have a seminar going on. A large room, ballroom with a lot of people sitting round table and the topic is efficiency. So that was the prompt I gave and this is the image I got. This is Copilot or designer, whatever you want to use, completely free. And earlier, text was not managed properly, but now text is also managed very well. There are some other examples. I keep telling people that there are thousands of features and we use a very small fraction. So the money is going, but there is no value back route because the subset is being used and that to being misused. So it's literally like tearing money. So I wanted to illustrate that visually so I created a machine to tear money. Look at the prompt and look at the output. This is a useful business context based image. I can I actually use it in my presentations. Another session I recently did, I think in this room itself, few months back for CIOs, that was to show how to calculate and quantify the value of, and I wanted an image which shows Jenna on one side and something related to money on the other side. So, if you use the visuals correctly, you minimize the text, you are communicating more visually. So that's about image generation. Now let me also show you image analysis, the reverse story. Now what I did is, the image which I just created using GenAI, I gave as an input. And this was an image generated using GenAI. I said, show me aircraft apron with all staff being cats. That was the original prompt. This is the image which got generated and now I gave that as an input and asked it to analyze. This was in two different instances, two different user IDs, so there was no continuation. So it is very good at image analysis. Now this was, let me, this is an engineering example. Obviously, this bolt is not going to open easily. So I just gave the image and said, what is this and what is the solution? So it told me exactly what the problem is and exactly what the solution is. So it cuts across all kinds of scenarios. There's a handwritten set of notes. I asked it to do OCR and of course it did it, but that's not the end of it. I said now translate it in Hindi or whatever, Chinese. It does that as well. So sophisticated image analysis capabilities. Coming back, cybersecurity training. Many people who have Office 365 do not know that is extensive end user level cyber security training built into the product. If you go to attack simulation under Defender, you will see all these are the training topics available right within Microsoft platform and they are available in multiple languages including Hindi. So most customers I talk to have not even noticed. So please notice it and use it. This is completely out of the box. I don't understand licensing, but I know it is a part of Microsoft platform. The other related topic is uh, attack simulation. I am sure all of you do some kind of attack simulation internally. Again, another thing which is commonly not known is inside Microsoft platform, there is attack simulator available, which gives you payloads, which gives you phishing websites, which are safe, but it will give you the telemetry of who clicked, what was the level of attack, how did the user respond, and based on that telemetry, you can target the relevant amount of training to them. The entire campaign management is built in. All right. Now, all of us create flowcharts. I have shown you Mermaid as one option, but sometimes you actually want to draw boxes and create a flowchart or an infographic. Most of us try to struggle with these ancient shapes. Stop doing that because Office 365 has built in version of Visio now. 
Many people don't know that. As IT, of course, you know, it's a separate paid product, but I'm not asking you to buy it. Any Office license, Office 365 has Visio built in. It's browser-based, file saved on OneDrive, co-authoring is allowed, and thousands of professional SVG shapes are available. Various types of diagrams are available out of the box. Here are some examples. And most people who do any kind of flowcharting in Visio or similar tools, we know how to work on it. We put a shape and then we put another shape and we connect it. Don't do that. There's a new way of doing it. Hover on it, select the shape. Again, hover in the correct direction. I want it below now. Again, choose the shape. Like that, without going and dragging, dropping and connecting, you can create faster diagrams using this. So that's about Visio. Now PowerPoint, many of us use Designer, which is an AI feature, not Copilot. It has been there for eight years now. But many people don't know that timelines can be created very quickly in PowerPoint with just one click. Put it as bulleted list, click on the designer button, home tab, and you get a diagram. So this is what I wrote, and this is the timeline it gave me. And this is smart art. What does that mean? I can edit it and add one more item, and it will automatically adjust. This is a very good use for creating quick timeline. All right, arrange images, another designer feature. You can randomly put up to eight images and click on designer button. It will auto arrange them. It will also give you multiple variations. Now I have put one, two, three, four, five, but I forgot to put an image. No problem. Put another one. It will auto adjust up to eight images. It understands the content of the image and also does cropping intelligently. This is AI in action. Translation is something many people don't realize it is there in Microsoft 365. This is a typical document, Word document. If you go to review, language, translate, translate document, this is not a copilot feature. There's a native feature in Office 365. It'll ask you which language. Right now, I'll choose Hindi. And that's it. The original document is not disturbed and it'll create a new document with translation. Now, while we are at it, there are two other features in Word, Outlook and OneNote, which are like a commonly unknown or lesser utilized. So this requires, of course, internet, which I'm struggling with right now, but we'll come back to it. While that is happening, there is a dictation feature available. That dictation feature, most people have not noticed or used. We know that in Windows, there was always voice to text, but it never worked properly. So dedicated more sophisticated users would go to Dragon or something like that. Now, of course, Dragon is purchased by Microsoft, but this is nothing to do with that. This is now AI driven dictation, which works beautifully. While that translation is going on, let me see if this works. As soon as you start translation, stop it because you have to choose the language. Now, there it is. It created a Hindi version of it while keeping everything, including headings, subheadings, tables, and formatting. This is available out of the box. 65 plus languages are supported. So many of your companies are multicultural. This will be very useful. There is an equivalent feature in PowerPoint and Excel, but currently that requires you to select something and then translate. Unlike Word, entire PowerPoint presentation doesn't get translated. But recently, a few days back, that was announced, but that's a part of Copilot. Now coming to the dictation part. Before you start dictation, make sure the language chosen is correct. Yes, if it is English, also choose Indian accent. That gives you much better quality. Yeah. So now I'm going to do live dictation. Hopefully it will work. So this is how live dictation works. If you have not tried it, please try it. As you can see, I am not speaking particularly slowly. And this doesn't just convert voice to text. It also understands commands. So it's equally important to click on that question mark at some point and learn which commands you can say. For example, I want the next paragraph. The command for that is new line. I just said new line, but it didn't add because I have to take a pause before giving the command. New line. So learn this, use it to your advantage. It's not just using dictation for dictation's sake. Many people express better when they're talking rather than typing. And most of us don't have proper typing speed. So this gives you more natural content. Now unrelated feature. And here is a best practice. If you see a drop down, please drop it down. Human intervention is required for that. It's not auto drop down. All drop downs are dead because nobody drops. Them. There's a beautiful transcription feature. Many people are desperately finding transcription 
and lot of transcription requirements because there is no native thing in IT. People go to shadow IT and go to all kinds of sites which can be dangerous. There is a native transcription available. Upload audio or video and it will translate into six whatever transcribe into n number of languages. 300 minutes of transcription you get per month per user. That's about transcription. Dictation we have covered. Here is a new feature. This is paid version of Copilot in OneDrive. So I have files in OneDrive. One of the files is a job description for graphic design. And then I'm going to choose some resumes as well. So I have chosen four resumes, one JD. And now I am asking it to compare it, find the best candidate, give me a comparison table and give them a rating. All that it does without opening the files. And now it has also selected the candidate for me. The table scrolled up and because it's in a small pane, the table is not really visible. So I copied it in Excel. So this is what it created in one prompt. So this is an HR example, but this is an example in HR. Any kind of files you can use for comparison, summarization, recap, and so on. This is a co-pilot feature. So which license doesn't really matter. You should have co-pilot license. All right, moving on. The next thing I want to show you is, uh, the next thing I want to show you is large data. This has nothing to do with AI, but there's a very common problem faced by users. They have the need, the solution has been there in front of them for at least 10 years, but nobody has told them. So what is the idea? I'm sure if you go and look at your users, many people are struggling. They're open, trying to open an Excel file. It takes ages to open. The machine is so slow, they can't use it. There's loss of productivity every day. People have given up on that. They think, I say, yeah, life is kill pagar milta hai. Right? That's how the life goes on. What most people don't understand is Excel is not designed to capture large amount of data. Excel sheet is the wrong place for it. The solution to all these files is to import data not in Excel but in data model. Once you have that, you can create relationships and eliminate useless VLOOKUPs which inflate the file. You can handle multi-million rows. There is no upper limit. File size will be small and your analytics will be at least 20 times faster than whatever it is. So all the benefits, the only thing is people don't know how to use it. Now that applies to data cleanup and import in general. Most people use manual formulas, macros, utilities, all of the above. These are absolutely ancient and inefficient methods. Stop doing it. There is a better method available in every version of Excel, which is called Power Query. So data, get data, Power Query. It can do all kinds of cleanup whatever you can imagine and more. And one of the things it can do is while importing the data, you have a choice. Do you want to import it in an Excel sheet, which you can do for small data or put it in data model, in which case there is no upper limit and you get high performance. So this is how you can transform slow Excel files to high performance, better analytics instantly with no extra effort and no extra expense as well. All right, next. Loop tasks, I mentioned about loop, but when I did an informal poll, I realized most people don't use loop. And that's a sad thing because it's a native part of office. Any version has it. This button is waiting for someone to click on it for at least two years now. Nobody clicks on it. Please click on it. It gives you, this is a chat of course. In a chat, I want to put a task list, delegate work to someone and everyone in the chat should be able to update it. You know, any chat, if I put something, only I can edit it, others can't. This rule is broken by using loop. So you can use any loop component to get the job done. You put the task, at the rate, mention it to someone and maybe across 20 chats I'm getting mail or tasks. I go to to-do app, assign to me all the tasks generated from chats, meetings, emails will get auto consolidated. So as a user, I don't have to go to 15 chats to find out what work was given to me or I don't have to double click on 50 minutes of meetings to find out what was my work. Loop is an integral part of meetings as well. So please use it to your advantage. Speaker course. This is an amazing feature, absolutely underutilized in every team's meeting. When you start the meeting, go click on these three dots, go to turn on speaker coach. There's no extra payment. This is a native feature. It will not do anything. It'll say, okay, it's on. Now, after the meeting, you will quietly get a report in your chat. Only you can see the report. Nobody else, not even IT. 
And this actually analyzes the way you speak and helps you improve. Now, whether you are a novice or you are the best public speaker, it doesn't matter. It will help you improve. So it's telling me, I, this is a live thing from my session. I spoke for 90 minutes and I uttered the word also 67 times. Now, who is going to tell me that? Nobody will tell me that. right? But now this thing has told me. Now I'm going to consciously think of some of these and improve the way I deliver. But then, other than this also comes to me naturally. Now what else do I say? So it is not stopping there. It's saying in case you don't know, there are synonyms for also. Use that. So it looks at filler words, looks at the pace. It says only in few places it was a little slow or fast. Otherwise good. Monologue in my case, it's always a monologue unfortunately. But then intonation, it looks at whether I'm speaking the same tone, up, down, whatever. And then it also understands inclusiveness. I'm sure all of us know master, slave, architecture. Those words should not be uttered now. People get offended. It says instead of master, you say expert. If it was master slave, it would have said primary or secondary. So it's holistic improvement to your presentation skills. And a similar feature exists in PowerPoint. It's in desktop as well as browser. There's something called rears with coach. So sit with your presentation alone, deliver it as though you are delivering it to an audience. Let PowerPoint look at you. There is a body language option also, enable that. It looks at the way you deliver, the way you read slides, the where you where are you looking at the camera properly? And at the end of it, it will give you a very comprehensive report about how you spoke, what was the thing. I read this slide. So it's saying don't read slides. If you were reading slides, what value are you adding? People will say just mail the slide to me. Why did you waste my time? So it actually improves your life. And rears again, improve it and refine. So that's PowerPoint coach. Now from an IT security perspective, irrespective of which office, you have, you have three scores at least to look at. There are more. Security score, compliance score and adoption score. I'm sure most of you already do that. But this is equally important because this breakdown also gives you action items. Now all of you know that this is not just a number. It changes daily based on the threat perception and it gives you actions to improve the score. But when you get actions to improve the score, who is going to look at this number? How often are we going to look at this number? And how are we going to implement those actions? So the idea is, if it's a security thing, security team will do it. Compliance team will do it. Adoption, nobody does it. Anyway, that's not the idea. This is an organizational thing. So those numbers have to be monitored as a team, including the leadership, l and because training is involved, IT, compliance, risk, whoever. And then consciously do it. The action items are given in different categories. And you can decide which actions to prioritize and implement them. To implement these actions, you don't have to use Microsoft product. You can use non-Microsoft products as well. All right. The next one, PDF assemble. Many people are struggling to assemble PDFs from scanned documents and all that happens on WhatsApp and stuff like that. WhatsApp is a danger from a security privacy point of view as well. Most people don't know that Office app, even the free version of Office mobile app has a very good PDF assembler. Go to Office app, go to create PDF, then take photos. It will allow you to straighten it. It will also increase the contrast to increase readability for documents. It understands whiteboards also, multiple, and then any number of photos, and then it will create PDF. Commonly not known. The other thing which is, which has been there since 2016 is most people are still struggling to edit PDFs. People find random third-party products which may also be phishing sites very often. So please tell people, right-click on a PDF, open with, if you don't see Word, choose another app, then you will see Word. Please choose Word. Word is a full-fledged PDF editor. It is not a new feature. It is not an AI feature, but useful all the same. Now here is another one. Many people get scanned documents and they want to put this data in Excel and literally they are typing or again going to random shadow IT sites. Don't do that. Just take a snip tool, take the photo, then go to Excel. This is, I think, Office 365 version of Excel. In that data, other sources, picture, picture from clipboard. And now this uses AI, requires internet connection. It not only recognizes text, OCR is not new. It understands rows and columns also. Few corrections and you get data in Excel. This 
is revolutionary for users. Most users who have that button have never looked at. Image to data, that's what I just showed you. And last one before I finish is Edge. Edge, this is uh, a page. I'm trying to read this news. There's some news site. Look at the amount of distraction I have. Where is the news itself is worthy of searching, right? So now what do you do? What most people will do is either live with it or they'll find ad blockers or some something like that. You absolutely don't need to do all of that. Just open any page in Edge and look for this button. This is called Immersive Reader. One click and see what happens. This is the same page. This is available for at least five years. Hardly anybody knows it. This should become a standard operating procedure for anyone who does browsing every day. And the last thing this is my blog. I want to give you a link to that. Again, QR codes. People go to random sites, unsafe sites to create QR codes. Right click in Edge and say generate QR code for this page. That's all there is to it. So that's it. Thank you.